How's it going everybody? This is RPS Airsoft coming back to you on Friday night, 8 o'clock, like we did last week and we're going to do for the next few weeks and hopefully forever. Alright, um, I guess we're starting this live feed with, uh, you know, just a little bit of, uh, I guess, knowledge, right? Eventually we're going to get to a gun, but first I wanted to talk to you, talk to you guys about this and the little bit of knowledge is gears. Yes, gears. Okay, so uh, I got a, this particular build, and a um, customer brought me a set of gears, and you know I thought they were good, so I started using them on the gun and started shimming them and stuff like that. And for some strange reason, I kept getting this very strange crunch sound out of the gears. You know, it would definitely be, um, you know, it, it was just a very strange. Um, occurrence that was happening because I knew the shimming was good I knew the uh, the uh, the bevel to pinion was good and everything was working fine there was no damage to the piston you know and everything was running but it was just a strange crunch sound so I started to going through all the gears and everything and come to find out that the gears that were brought to me were unfortunately um, a little inferior I went through them um, uh, very meticulously to the teeth and everything like that and this is the gear set that I got brought to me right here on the, my right hand side and I started noticing differences between these two gears and um, realizing that um, yeah there's definitely something wrong with these gears at first glance they look pretty normal they look pretty standard you know and you know you wouldn't notice any differences between them but once you start comparing one to the other you start noticing differences between them like on this one this is the one that the customer brought and as you can tell there's a set pin between both of the racks that goes all the way through the top rack and all the way through to the bottom rack all right it's uh, it's a little strange like if you hold the gear sideways it's really hard to see up show on camera and stuff but if you look between the racks, right, there's an actual gap between them because, honestly, I don't think they were pressed. And this one, if you look closely, this is a regular, uh, uh, granted, this is only a 12, 12 to 1 gear. So, um, if you look at between the racks, there's absolutely no gap and they're flush with one another. There is no pin going through from the top rack to the bottom rack, okay? And, um, yeah, so there's little notices like that. Also, uh, when it comes to um, the actual teeth itself, um, I did find a lot of metal debris between the teeth and stuff, and it's hard to see. It's hard. Let me get. Um, let me get a toothpick. Okay, cool. So I don't know if you guys can see or not, but there's like little micro damage. There's little micro damage between the teeth. Like you can kind of see it there, there. You can see it all the way through. And as you can tell, it's like really even damage you know from the sector so the sector was on here I mean, you can tell there was the sector the sector gear was not touching uh the spur gear right here on the outside so there's no damage there because usually like if the sector and the spur gear are shim way too t way too close you'll see a swirling pattern right around here like all the way around with and um and also on the top here too, if like the bevels too tight. Sorry, this one's for the bevel. This one's for the sector. You'll see. Sorry, you'll see the the swirl like all the way around here. As you can see, there's there's no swirl or any damage on the teeth. But between the teeth, you know, there is there is damage there in a couple of areas and stuff. So that gives me indication that you know there's really number one, the gears could be made out of a, an inferior metal, and number two. Um, there could be uh, micro deviations between the teeth causing that crunching sound and it's it's basically a slip from the gears you know and actually um, letting go from one another on the teeth 
um so yeah i did i did notice that and it's it the this one is a very strange set i've i haven't seen shs do anything like this before i have no idea where this gear set came from um hopefully i find out later you know from the customer and uh yeah so definitely also that is different on the spur gear and also on the bevel gear which it's i mean I, I mean i really wish i could have you guys like um you know feel the gear and go over it um right here on the teeth going this way like this it is very rough we're talking like almost like no finish whatsoever rough i mean there's the the, there was some um, some right here, it, and I don't know if you guys can hear it on the microphone, but you can hear that kind of like a middle, like you know what I mean. And it's it's not a smooth, it's not a smooth travel when it comes to the uh, the pick going through the teeth. It's, it feels like there's a lot of debris in there, and I didn't even use this one. This one didn't even touch the gearbox. The uh, I used the Lonex bevel helical and uh helical bevel and pinion gear so this gear didn't even touch the gearbox and for it to have the brie in it that's uh that's kind of bad you know and it's like and as you can see like like it it just caught right there and i'm gonna do the same thing to the other one and as you can see let me see put it on camera see it's a it's a smooth travel all the way out um hey uh thanks for the love uh yo it's gonzo <laughs> thanks he said you sound so smart oh well thanks <laughs> really appreciate it you're making I, him turn pink guys i'm i'm just I'm, I'm just pointing that out there you know pointing this stuff out there because i know a lot of you guys like you know are like me and like to tinker and you know try to do your own guns or do your own guns successfully and stuff and uh you know like i'm just trying to throw some education out there so um yeah i mean unfortunately i there's uh when it comes to these shs uh manufacturers and stuff like that um um yeah there's there's a lot i i, I don't know exactly who is many who manufactures these gears but you can tell the big difference between the manufacturers so this is definitely a different manufacturer from this from this guy right here um it's a little oh, yeah what's up um so we have here uh, it's a question so they're asking if these are fake gears i think the answer is no they're not fake gears they're just assembled <laughs> well no 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 they're not fake it's just it's a different company manufacturer so what happens so what happens in a lot in manufacturing is that you know a company will say okay we'll meet your order you know and then they meet that order and then the retailer needs more gears right and they'll say okay well if you can't you know supply us with gears we need to go to a different manufacturer to provide us gears and a different manufacturer will say oh okay we'll totally supply you we'll have we have these gears here that look identical to these and we'll make them for you we'll just put the stamp on it and send it out and we'll get ready to go and that happens quite a bit of times um i have noticed a lot of companies do that you know what i mean they they hire another company because the, their main supplier either ran out of materials, can't get the materials, or did just supply lines are super slow, and it just happens, you know. And you know, companies need to get their gears. I mean, you know, supply and demand. Unfortunately, yeah. it looks like they they see it's uh, not passing quality control, just rushing it out just to get the job done and. Um, to the next order sort of thing yeah pretty much you know i mean it happens you know it's not like a like a every single time it's gonna happen to you you know what i mean it's just you know this just happens to be just like a bad timing i guess or bad batch <laughs> um and that's something you'll you'll notice here at rps airsoft is we actually take the time to spend time with each individual gun like we're not some gun factory where we're just cranking out builds and cranking out orders and mods and and repairs and stuff we're we're actually taking the time to individually look at the problem with each gun and get it fixed to your liking and figure out you know what it makes your cry tag different from his cry tag or you know his tm different from her tm and we're we're individually focusing on on your gun unlike 
these guys who just cranked out gears just to get a project done. Yeah, and mostly like I like I don't want to put like these guys like on blast like saying, "Oh no, this is bad" and blah blah blah. No, it just happens. You know, every company, you know, uh goes through where they get a bad batch of manufacturing. You know, it's it's not really their fault. They're just trying to do their job and you know, fill the order and stuff like that. But, you know, and we don't know what actually happened on the, on the manufacturing. And it could be, you know, like I said, many of those things and that affects them. And, you know, it's not, it's not really their fault. You know, they're just trying to crank out, you know, what they can and, and do what they can. But I mean, what we do here is that unfortunately, um, unfortunately for you guys is that this is why I take my time building a high speed gun is because of the little details yeah, it looks like uh, yeah, this is Samuel. I totally agree with you. Um, several of this stuff is probably sitting off the port in San Pedro yeah. um, over out in uh, Long Beach. Uh, Jay Gonzalez, man, that, that sucks. Uh, you see what happened to his gun right here? Mm -hmm. um, he picked up an AEG with the wires all chewed up. Mm -hmm. And when he went to put in the battery, he almost started a fire. It was brand new from the retail store. Yeah, um, it happens. Do you want to share about manufacturer warranty versus... You know the tech warranty like if we get a gun and we see that there's oh yeah yeah issue. i mean um of course every time we get a gun or anything like that even if it's brand new we go over it check it you know what i mean open if i have to if if i know like for example um for example let's say uh aeg scar um the vfc scar okay very common issue that happens is that the uh, the bullet connectors uh, on the between the stock and the uh, and the actual body itself they wear down. You know what I mean? And you know sometimes you know people try to do the um, upgrades and you know they um, you know they they rip them off it's just by accident. It's not a big deal. You just got to put them back on. You know and and you know resolder them back in place and stuff. Um, also with the connectors, the Tamiya connectors, it happens, you know, all the time where, you know, manufacturers will sometimes ship it out and it's actually, you know, like one of the connectors is just out of place and you just got to push it back into place and the gun works perfectly fine. So, yeah, it's it's not too bad. I just wanted to point it out there because just in case you guys see those sets out there with the little set pin and everything, just beware, you know what I mean? It might not be a good set. But right now, I guess we're going to move on, and we're going to do a little preview of a gun. And that... a quick shout out to our buddies at Legacy. Good yeah. luck at Jungle Ball coming yeah, up. Yeah, pretty much. This is just a preview. I am not done with a gun. I'm actually not done with a gun yet. This is just a preview of um, the gun, how the gun moves and sounds like. Uh, we are going to have a before video, because I, I did take a before video. Before I started even working on it with stock G and G, and we uh, we definitely uh, you know took uh, took our time um, working on this and making sure everything works. Um, so yeah, so here's here we go. All right. Yeah. Oh, the selector, yeah. Yeah, the Peru's a little finicky when it comes to selectors. Really, really touchy. And that's why it's not finished. Yep. And we go back. This okay. is consistently shooting between 336 FPS and 341 FPS with a deviation in the RPS between 29 and about 32. Um, uh, RPS. Really steady. What did I say? Uh, you said FPS. I did say FPS. Uh, Sorry. I have the live feed in uh, my Bluetooth so I can make sure the sound is working. So I'm hearing myself talk like in a 10 second delay from what I'm saying. Yeah. So, yes. Deviation <laughs> in the RPS 29 to 32, FPS 3, uh, 336 to 341. <laughs> okay. FPS. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm special. Dingson. <laughs> All right, so, um, okay, so let's move on. There's that. And, okay, let's move on. So today... Um, Samo here uh, bought a Lancers uh -huh. um, over at Marietta, and uh, right out of the box, they were already messed up. Don't tell me the gears broke. Ooh, that's a good guess. 
um, and then uh, Yoad Gonzo says, damn, it sounds clean AF with lots of muscles. Oh, nice. Okay, well, well there you go. Um, yeah, so there's, that's still not done yet. Um, so we'll, oh, I'll keep working on it just to make sure everything turns out right. And we're working on finding a way to work with the heating with the overheating issues, yes. Yeah, so that the I'm trying to figure out if the perim is causing the heating issues or the motor itself has heating issues. So. But if you're playing airsoft in the snow on a super super chilly day, that's a perfect one to keep your hands warm. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I'll figure it out. I just got to do the testing on the uh, amperage voltage and all that good stuff. For the Lancer, yes. Battery and gears, you already know. <laughs> yeah, the, that's a extremely, extremely common issue with those. Uh, also, stay away from Classic Army. They do the same thing. They do the exact same thing. All right. This brings us to today's gun. Okay. So, today's gun is going to be P90. All right. I don't know how many of you guys have a P90. But I know this particular one I gave to a friend, and this is actually, this particular one is actually my first Airsoft gun, so it's about 20, oh my god, I think like 10 years old, or 11? So, um, yeah, so yeah, pretty much, and uh, unfortunately for this old guy, um, yeah, something seems to be missing right here on the side, as you can tell. I don't know if you guys can tell or not. Uh, but yeah, there's supposed to be this lever right there. But what we're going to do on top of that is that I'm going to go over the gearbox, make sure nothing's broken, and make sure everything is there and everything moves so far. Nozzle moves. And uh, there doesn't seem to be too much damage on it. Uh, let's see if the gearbox still works question what are your thoughts on the x9 classic army oh um okay so here's the thing with classic army right now um i really don't recommend it because um it kind of raises a question when classic army is including an extra set of gears in their uh in your box like they know it's gonna be yeah so uh, they just yeah, I, I don't know if they're still doing that because that was a little while ago, but they were doing that for quite a bit, and they were like, hey, here's an extra set of gears, good luck, and um, unfortunately, I, 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 don't, I don't recommend Classic Army for nothing, I, I, I really don't, like, if, if you already have one, I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't know what else to say, I mean, it's uh, like buying a car yeah. and having it come with a, a second transmission. You know, here you go, just in case. Yeah, pretty um, much. Hold on, let's see if this works. Hold on. Hey, look at that, it works. All right, so let's go in and clean it up and see what's inside. So for the record, this is not skipping uh, any customer guns. This was a request for repair. There's someone who wants to run this in an event. So uh, we're actually building this up so someone can test it out. So, for those of you who have guns in the line, I know you heard him say, oh, this is one of my first guns. No, it's not skipping you. This is actually uh, being worked on for a reason. Yeah. It just happens It just happens that it, you know. It, it tugs at his heartstrings. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all right. So first off, we remove screws here, here, and there's supposed to be a third one here, but I mean, I guess it's missing. All right, well, let's do that. And then after that, you pull on that. And then you take this screw off. You know, in a throwback to that classic army Ooh. question, it's uh -huh. it does make a good a good starter. Like if if, yeah, you're, if, if you, you if you want yeah. to do tinkering and you're practicing teching and you want something That's definitely not the gun to go for. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it it's not where you want to start. Like if you just want you know, something to run with, you know, something to give to your kids, you know, why not? Yeah. yeah. Kind of like Lancer. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, when it comes to, like, Lancer and all of them, they just kind of, yeah, they have their quirks. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I love this question. Huh. What is the worst gun you've had to work on so far? Oh, God. Okay, where do we start? How, how big can, of a list can I put in there? 
like like really like how big can the list be because honestly there's Wait, let's see top three okay well top three uh uh well i guess the first one would have to be i know a lot of people are gonna be like no that's not true but the first one would have to be a jag a jag scatter gun that's one uh, it's not the top three that's number three the only reason why is because um, uh, the Jack scatter gun, it's his own thing. It, uh, it You have to, like, if you try to put TM parts in there, right, it, they'll kind of work, but the tolerances between the TM and the Jack arms are, are 0 0.02 millimeters, like, different. What are you doing right now? You know? Oh, right now I'm going to get the gears out of here. And, and oh, yeah, I forgot Gotta pop. Yep. Gotta release the pressure from that, and then now I'm gonna take this half of the shell off. Oh, I forgot the front and screw. And for people who are new to teching, uh, what did you just release? The tension of uh, the uh, anti um, anti reversal latch, and uh, releasing the pressure from the main spring, so that way when I um, remove the shell. Hopefully the gears don't go flying, but you know. What does it feel like when it releases? It just goes click, and then that's it. And then the gears go limp. Perfect. Okay. All right, second least favorite gun to work on. Um. Oh man, that's a good one. Ah, I'm sorry, guys. This, this, this list is actually pretty, pretty uh, substantial. And not, it's not because I don't like to work on them. It's just the difficulty the difficulty it's uh i would have to say the uh aa12 the tm aa12 and it's not because it's a bad gun it's not at all it's because it's 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 complicated to to get at the uh at the gear just to get to the gearbox it's it's a whole like okay there's two shells and you got to split the shells and then you got to remove uh, remove very carefully this like shroud that goes over it make sure that there's no springs go flying then after that you can take this gearbox out then after that <laughs> and there's a lot of screws and if this is your first time taking about this type of gun make sure you're wearing eye protection yeah like definitely you, you need to make sure you're just very careful because in that gun yeah it's I mean don't get me wrong when the one once it's finished and you replace the piston and you put a war fit in it oh man the thing it, it moves it, it moves really well you know um you still can't use an 11 one but you can use a higher a higher uh ma and c of a 74 which brings it up to like if i remember right from like 12 rps to like 19 something like that like I like it, it brings it up quite a bit you know what i mean but you you still need to be careful not to spam it too much because otherwise uh um you could uh, strip the actual gears. And there's no gears yet for it that I know of. So I don't know if maybe overseas they have them. That'd be great. But as far as I know, they don't have them. They don't, we don't have them out here. All right. Time for your number one least favorite gun. Guys, this is hard. For those of you who have worked in retail, <sighs> this is like someone coming up to you and saying, who's your favorite Karen, Okay. Yeah, everyone's no, got like a it's, million stories. It's, it's his, not that bad. His his guns are, are his Karens. Okay, all right. Okay, fine. The number one gun that, honestly, I don't like at all working on, even though I can make it work like a dream and make it work to the point where it's like, it's in like in unrecognizable when I'm done with it. Uh, it's a Bolt M4. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, both M fours are known to pop gears. Uh, the pistons are actually like really good, but if anybody ever tries to sell you a bolt piston, don't buy it because it does not fit in anything else. They made it to the point where the rails here, the the actual protruding rails on the piston, and the rails inside the gearbox only fit to each other. Also, the diameter of the piston is a little small it's actually quite a bit smaller than a standard one so it'll fool you that it fits in there but it'll actually flip flop like this inside, inside a regular gearbox and that's for the plastic one the aluminum one on the other hand 
will actually eat up your gearbox if you pop it in there and the, and there's just all kinds of not a good time <laughs> so basically what he's saying is if you decide to send in one of those guns for us to repair we will throw in one patch that you can rep and say hey guess who fixed this yep because honestly um i can get that thing um also bolts are recoil shock the recoil shock systems right just like the kwa ones but um uh, they're a lot heavier on the recoil than the kwa ones they're a lot heavier they're i mean i'll i'll give them props because the shell can take the damage the ball bearings that they use can take the damage the nozzle the tap of plate it's just the gear strip the bevel gear strips um the uh, the pinion gear strips and uh, um what else uh what else was it um oh yeah that, that's pretty much it it's just the gears just the gears and the piston sorry about that <laughs> got a little a little distracted <laughs> so anyway um yeah so that's pretty much it now that, that's the one that i just like i really i i don't like the gun but i know i can work on it i know i could get it i can get it uh to work properly and make it work really good but it's it, it's just very problematic just to get it up and running properly what about you guys what are your favorite guns to run uh least favorite to run and have you any of you guys ever done your own teching Yeah. What are you doing right now? I am checking the height of the gears, make sure they're aligned properly, and if um, and this prevents it, catching and friction. I'm assuming. Well, yeah. I mean, if um, the gears happen, like especially the sector and the spur gear touch each other, there'll be swirl lines. And right now, as you can see, the sec. I don't know if you guys can see, but the sector gear. And the spur gear are definitely touching each other, uh, so I would definitely would I'm gonna have to raise the sector gear just a little bit. So when you're doing shimming, um, you know, get the spur gear as low as possible until it's not touching anything, right? Right now where it is is uh, is uh, perfectly fine. You know what I mean? It's not you, you don't hear any metal touching or anything like that. So if that is the case on the spur gear, then the the one that you raise is the sector gear. Alright, so Samuel likes running his high kappa for close quarters, and indoor works pretty good. That's good. So we got Clone, he's done his own teching. Uh, <laughs> and Eric can tell I should not touch an AEG again. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but uh, yes to my high kappa. You know, Eric is spelled E-R-I-C-K, good sir. Oh, Ooh. what? He misspelled my name? Wow. Wow. All the years that I thought I knew him. Oh my god. So, so are you B-R-Y-A-N? Oh, you mean Borat? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see right there. <laughs> What's up? Uh, let's see. He says that's how much he loves you. Oh, thanks. I really appreciate it. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm like really actually trying to, uh, you know, shim this gearbox right. <laughs> okay. Got a little bit more. Okay. So I just need one more little tiny one and then we're good.
Oh, yep, that's right. What? We just announced your name. What? First time. Oh. Uh, hey guys, this is Eric. He said uh, he's texted you several times but never knew your, aim your name. And he says you're really cool to talk to. Uh, who? Uh, this is Samuel. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep, this is Eric. Oh. Hi. And that other voice did you hear in the background? The annoying one. The annoying one. You know, that's Danny. What's up, guys? She, uh, she's definitely, uh, helpful and, uh, attractive at the same time, Aww. which helps. Thank you. Just depends on the day you catch her. Yep. Either or. Thanks. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we're going to rotate okay. this just a little bit so you guys can see down what's going on. Okay, one second. Hold on. It's just, uh, Oops. trying to get this height. Okay, so one thing that does happen, okay, if you go too high, right, with your shimming, right, which it's a very, very common thing, um, is that if you go too high with the sector gear, you'll definitely bind on the tablet plate. And it won't work right. It'll cause, uh, you know, all kinds of feeding issues, and you're going to be like, what? what? But why? I don't understand. Like, so you need to that's why when I sit here and I put in the tablet plate in here, I check to make sure that it's not binding against the uh, against the sector gear, just to make sure that it has a proper distance and everything. And yeah, it looks good. Okay, good. Okay, sometimes what happens with the tablet plates also <coughs> is that, um, like right here, they'll be over. Um, over molded you know what I mean it's from manufacturing the molds aren't perfect you know what I mean and you'll see it like right here like this this one is definitely over over molded a little tiny bit so it's not smooth you see there's a there's a line right here so that means this part here like if you hold it right here like that um, you'll see that here it's just a little bit like a little bit bulged out so it's not perfectly flushed also the fins a little crooked so I just gotta make sure you know to take that into consideration when shimming because there's there's a bulge there like like it's 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 hard to show on camera I'm, I, it's just it's really easy to see you know when you have it when you have it in person you know um, but it I, I know it's hard to show on camera but you know trust me it's that unfortunately that little bulge is there uh, so what I like to do is grab some sandpaper, usually like some, like, you know, like 800 or 1,000 grit, and just go over it a little bit, you know what I mean? Not like a lot, you know what I mean? Like to the format or anything like that. It's just to smooth it out a little bit more, just to make it a little a little bit more flat. Because once you start sanding it, you, you guys notice I'm going flat. And if you guys notice, the, like once I start sanding the ridges and stuff like that, start coming out. So you start noticing the imperfections on the tablet plate a lot, a lot easier once you start, you know, hitting it with a little bit of sandpaper. And then you guys might have seen me move uh, the gearbox out of the way. Uh, try and not do any sanding above the gears because you don't want anything to get in there and kind of get it all grimy. And yeah, I'm just trying to keep this in camera right now. And thank you, Danny, for moving it. I really yeah, appreciate thanks. it. Um, you know, because just to show you guys, you know, that um, that part right here, because it's like it's hard to see the imperfections. You know what I mean? Once you're just looking at it, you know, forward. But once you start hitting it with a little bit of sandpaper, you start seeing the imperfections come out. And it's just like, oh, OK, just got to, you know, move it a little bit and get it a little bit flatter. You know, you see it like going away. Okay, and that should be good enough. It should it shouldn't need too much. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Okay, all right. So there's little tiny bits. Okay, let's see. Let's try it out one more time. Let's see how it does. For those of you who did ask for it last week, uh, we took your suggestion. Uh, some of you have already 
followed us on there, but we did launch our YouTube channel. Uh, right now, we're every live stream we do, we're going to save it, and then we're going to post it on there. So if you guys need to go back and watch something, or um, maybe you saw um, you saw him doing something that you want to duplicate on your own gun later, you can go back, pause it, you know, do it with him, play it, you know, go forward, backwards. Um, we're also going to start doing um, sped up repairs you know so if we have like a two hour build coming up instead of you know putting two hours straight you know we'll we'll speed it up and you guys can just watch that you know quick flow going um and then we'll also do it um in slow motion like a regular speed um in case you're trying to duplicate duplicate similar results with your guns yep I don't know if you guys can see, but I mean, um, okay, so if you grab the tab of plate, right, and you just using gravity, you know you did it right, is that if you pull up the tab of plate and you let it go, it drops back down again. I don't know if you guys can see that. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's smoothed out. No catching or nothing? No, no catching, no nothing. So it's a good thing. Okay. All right, cool. So let's do that. We'll go with that. Felt like the spur gear was a little tight. So, okay, now let's, now let's move this out of the way. Okay. Are you guys planning one day to actually set up a tent at one of the fields? Uh, yes, we uh, are trying to get arrangements with certain fields so we don't step on anyone's toes some fields do already have contracts with techs so we want to make sure we're not intruding um, and kind of alienating ourselves from the beginning um but yeah yeah pretty much i mean uh, that's one of the main things that you know um it's uh it, it, it's we we don't i know we're new and stuff like that and uh you know, we definitely don't... <laughs> We're not new to the industry, but we are new to the business game. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, let me see. No, that's not thinner. Yeah. So, it's, it's definitely uh, definitely a new game that we got to do and, you know, watch out for and stuff. And, uh, like, uh, any manufacturers or anything like that listening out there, you know, we're more than willing to, you know share our opinions on certain things and yeah. maybe exchange ideas and stuff like that you know I've been, like i said um i i have been around for like mm -hmm. over 10 years you know doing this and uh, um and yeah i mean i have i have a lot of ideas i had uh, you know and if you're interested you know give us a call deviating from the question a little bit but um yeah we we do plan on being um, available as a mobile tech unit for some fields. Yeah. Um, one of the things we've already done a few times is someone will drop off a gun, we'll meet up and uh, pick up their gun, and then they'll say, hey, you know, I'm going to be at this field on this day, like, mm -hmm. can you have it ready? And we've actually, you know, driven to that field and done a drop off. They've played that day. Yep. We stuck around for a little bit, made sure it was working proper, um, passed chrono, see if there was anything they wanted to adjust, and then we took off. Um, you know, that that's an option too, so um yeah always uh feel free to ask just say hey this is what i'm thinking can you guys do this for me um the answer will never be no right from the bat yep. unless you sit here and you say hey do you mind driving this to us in you know yep. new york we're gonna be like that's a hard pass unless you decide to pay for shipping and handling for you know gas of two people to travel you know cross country yeah pretty much we're down for vacation if you're offering i know right <laughs> okay. um as far as going back to um any manufacturers who may listen to this at some point down the road um i think you've you've already made a few suggestions to some major companies right oh dude that was a long time ago yeah but yeah i mean you have yeah it was just a long time ago like you know they did a suggestion at polar star you know changed their oil and you know in greece because uh their um the oil that they were putting in like a few years ago i don't know if you if you guys ever like i want to say like maybe seven years ago um 
Polish Star was coming out with their guns, right, with the Jacks, and no, they were coming out barely with the F1s, and the F1s were failing right out of the box, and um, and they were failing out of the box, and uh, um, and they were just, uh, yeah, they, they were miscycling, they were not shooting, they were doing like a pop, 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 very low. Uh, very low pop and they would just would not cycle the nozzle would just stay in place and that was it uh, you definitely have to cycle through the settings and stuff but the problem was is that the grease that we're using was just way too thin and the o-rings on the inside of the pot on the inside of the nozzle in the poppet were actually getting stuck so what I had to do is take apart the front take out the nozzle you know and start taking you know everything apart and uh, and just put in new grease, you know, clean up the inside, put in new grease, and then out of nowhere, bam, came back to life, and it was started shooting and everything, and it was just, it was just a simple fix, you know, and it was, uh, it was very easy. I don't know if they did it. I'm guessing they did, since I haven't seen that happen, you know, anywhere, and uh, so I, I would think they did it. <laughs> so just a suggestion that I did a long time ago. Uh, let's see. I got this. So you guys asked uh, if we plan on being on any field at any fields, you know, setting up a booth or tent. Um, question back to you guys: um, What fields would you like to see us at? Yeah, that's a big one because uh, I mean, there's a, there's quite a bit of them out here. I mean, there's there's SE Village, there's uh, HSP, HSP, there's TAC, there's N one. And one. Oh. Jungle, Code Red. Yeah. Battle Lab. Yep. Antioch is a bit of a drive for us. Yeah. Same with the new field that. A bit. The, a bit. What, what's that new? The new field they opened in, uh, what is it, Oceanside or uh, Vista? The uh, Battle Lab one? Oh, that's a store. I thought they opened a field. Uh, I don't think so. I, I don't think. I don't think it. I don't think so. Um, yeah, no, that's a store. That, honey, I, you're getting it wrong. That's a store. Okay, it's a store. Um, Ooh. let's see now. Where was I? What's up? It looks like, uh, they'd like to see somebody at Jungle in Lake, uh, Lake Elsinore, uh, Warped Ops. Um, looks like, uh, there's really no one there. Um, Okay, so now. Yeah. What is this? Which one? Is that Paris? Paris. Oh, yeah. Is that the code red one? Oh, no, no, no. Paris is. Um, I don't know if I got this right or not, guys. This The um, the the field out there, it's, uh, um, it's uh, old. Um, it's kind of like uh, Ranging Waters uh, Water Park, if I remember right. Um, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of it right now. <laughs> Yeah, I was right. It's code red. Was it code red? Oh, yeah. okay. I was thinking. I was thinking the uh, the the water park. I can't remember the name of it. Right. Oh, Rockahula, Rockahula. Oh. But that's uh, that's an op. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now we went over the gearbox. Okay. Cool. Let's grab this new part and pop it in a place and see what happens. Uh, so one thing that does happen with these. Um, is that uh, sometimes there's an incompatibility issue when it comes to the uh, to the cutoff levers, right? They go on here. Um, sometimes they don't fit. Sometimes they don't hit the uh, the little shuttle that's in here, or sometimes they are too tight. When it comes to right here, uh, setting in the um, setting in the uh, um, inside the uh, inside the, 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 the harness right here. So what happens is that, I think that's what's gonna happen, is that uh, um, the screw might actually be too tight and grabbing on to the arm. I have to check. Let's see.
I'm oh, going to no. interrupt real quick and put something to Eric real quick. Our son just made him homemade ice cream. Oh, that's pretty good. Isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Wow. 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 That's pretty good. Dang. He definitely outdid himself. Science project homework. Yep. <laughs> well, extra credit, actually, I think. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think you're right. Okay. So trying to get this spring in there. Okay, there we All go. Alright guys, we have 15 minutes left before Instagram cuts us off as we learned from last time. If you guys have any questions, or if there's something you want to know about, something you want to see, something you want to say, now is the time to do so. Again, we do thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. And let's see if this worked. Okay, so to make sure... Hey, right. do, you want, do you want to take a vote? Did it work, guys? What do you think? Which... Hard, hard see if it worked? Let's see. Oh. You're, dun, dun, dun. All, we see is, all they see is a ring. All they see is the ring. Hard see if it worked, guys. I don't know. Oh yeah, you're welcome, Raymond. That's no problem. <laughs> uh oh, no hearts. Oh dang. I don't think it's gonna work. Nope, it's not gonna work. Oh, it's gonna cry. Oh good. The gearbox is gonna cry. Oh, we got one yes. Two <laughs> yes. Three yes. Thank you guys. All right, awesome. All right, All right let's, let's get test this. It out. Let's test it out and see if the lever actually works. All right, unfortunately with a P90, you gotta be very, very careful. Oop, there go all the hearts. Oh, I over pushed it, hold on. Yeah, you gotta, there we go. Yeah, there's a semi cut off. Yes, that worked. All right, let's pop it in the body and see if it, uh, see if it takes. Just so you guys know, he actually does get this excited for every game. I don't, maybe. <laughs> <Shut Yes. up. laughs> The inside of the heart of attack right here, guys. Okay, so we got to drop it into the uh, Ooh, body. steady stream of hearts coming in. Okay. Look at all the love right there. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. So that's sitting in there. All right, hon. Yes, sir. All right. So I need to... No, hold on, hold on. It's going to be on semi. Okay, I'm not going to put the back on yet. I would say you put it on the safe. No, because got we got to shoot it. You got to shoot it. Woohoo! You got to shoot it. Oops. Okay, so what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the gearbox push the gearbox in place to make sure it's it doesn't, that's, rock, out. It doesn't rock out. So what you need to do is while I hold it, you pull the trigger. Woohoo! Make sure it shoots in semi. Rotate, rotate. Okay. Is it on? Full? It is on semi. Okay. Oh, that means the lever's out too far. Okay, that's a different. That's a different issue. But at least it doesn't fire on safe. Yeah. There it goes. A little bit of overcycling, but no, there it goes. easy fix for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you just weren't pushing in hard enough. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the he, gear... was, he was being gentle. <laughs> the gearbox moved out of the way. I'm a bad. Yeah. I moved the gearbox and it just started going full auto again. All right. Sweet. <laughs> All right. So now let's pop this. Uh, we got to remember these. Unfortunately, this one only has one of these. These are the actual, um, this is the actual nut that goes in uh, that little crevice right there. And I got to pop that back in there. So in order to do that, I got to take out the gearbox again. Yay. Wood, wood. I know, right? Oh. Okay, let's see. Come on, don't be difficult.
Hmm, okay. Oh, these side crevices are really strange. Sometimes they get crushed. And then it can't fit the... Uh, the square peg in there. Nope. Yeah. These are definitely a little damaged. Hold on one second. I mean, uh, it's only, you know, ancient. I know, right? Thank you, Samuel. Can't wait for next Friday to see what we're going to work on. Oh, yeah. I think next Friday is, um... I think next Friday is TM Shotgun Day. Woo! I was going to say, I think next Friday is uh, where we kind of wrap up the end of our 10% um, off labor uh, promotion going on right now. Oh, well, yeah, there's that too. <laughs> so. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm the we'll, Greek. We'll have a bunch of guns come flowing through here. I know, right? I'm the, uh, I'm just the grease person, you know, that, uh... The works on the grease monkey. Yep, pretty much. You know, work on things and get things moving. And this thing is being stubborn. Hold on. Uh, just so you guys know, um, we did order patches. Patches should be here um, before December, I'd like to say. Um, we should be receiving them, I want to assume, somewhere around mid-end of November. Um, so if you guys wanted to... Uh, have a preview of them, or that's how you wanted them, uh, just so we can figure out um, how we're going to start getting them out to people. That way you guys don't have to, like, meet us at places. We can send them out. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, for those of you who have uh, driven to uh, Granada Hills to meet up with us, mm -hmm. uh, met up with us down in Long Beach, um, you know, we've, we've met in the middle with some people in Fullerton, um, Upland, mm -hmm. so... Well, while we don't mind driving around uh, to pick up your guns, there we go. Um, patches, you can probably mail those to you. I, I don't think those will get damaged in transit too too much. Yeah, right. Thank you. Raymond would be proud to wear it. Oh, right on. Thanks. Uh, Raymond, actually, I think your gun is almost done. Yeah. So we're working on that one. Yeah, um, just got to finish the... Hiccups on the hop-up unit, and it's good to go. Uh, Samuel, yes, they will be Velcro. Um, the patches that we ordered are Velcro uh, with PVC, um, so it's not going to be fabric. So they'll they'll last quite a bit. Okay, now I have the gearbox in place. All right, let's see. Now, uh... See how it goes. Well, on its own. Hey, look at that. Oh, that battery was Battery's slow. Dying. That one was low. Let me uh, Clone would like two patches. Oh. And Raymond will be picking your brain for suggestions on his Crytek. Okay. Um, guys, you just heard um, his battery start to die. Um, make sure you guys are taking care of your batteries. Um, a healthy battery will be, you know, sleek. Um, if your battery starts to get to the point where it is puffy and you can actually, like, hear it click. Yeah. Like you're turning on a... A TV remote or something? No, it's um, not that. Well, hey okay. Guys. That could be that bad. Start yes. again. Let's go. Yes. Um, this These is are, ready oh. to go. So <laughs> this will be going yeah. um, in yeah. a hazardous uh, waste container it's and all. disposed of properly. These do not go in Any a guy. regular trash no. can. Um, if you guys, if you guys have your battery charging and you start to see it get puffy like this, don't grab the battery and try and disconnect it, unplug the charger from the wall. Mm -hmm. You don't want to touch these while they're hot or while they're swelling. They can catch fire. They can explode. Yep. Um, the best thing you can do is remove it from its power source 
Um, this one sat cold for about 10 hours before we touched it specifically for this video. Yep. It is going in the disposal tomorrow. Yep. Um, other examples of batteries. Like that one. Different sizes, different shapes. Make sure you guys are taking care of your batteries. Yep. Yep, pretty much. Okay, well, this P90 is now 100% done. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we reshimmed it. We, we're going to shoot it right now. And let's see what it's uh, FPS is at. Oh. We didn't upgrade this one all fancy for any particular event. Someone yeah. just wants to play with it because they've always wanted to use a P90. So yeah, yeah. we fixed it up for him, got it working. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to charge anything. And else, at, the, at, the, at the end of <laughs> at the end of the event, it's coming right back home here. So yeah, you know. Let me see where it is where is the loader? What are you looking for? The loader. The loader. Yeah. Oh. oh, found it. Apparently, I decided to hide it for myself. Oh. Yep. That's that's a very neat game, you know, for all technicians. I think we all know that that uh. You know, hiding your own tools, hiding your old speed loaders and magazines and, you know what I mean? And then you turn around and like, wait, I just had that. And then you realize, wait a minute. It's right in front of me. <laughs> it's like that screw you lose on the mat that's black. No. With the black screw. That does not happen. In the dark. Maybe it happens. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Okay. See what it's shooting at. Let's see. About three thirty-eight to three forty-two. Is 40, that? Forty-three. No, that's forty-three. Okay. Yeah. Fair. About three thirty-eight to three forty-three. She just doesn't like to be wrong. <laughs> I'm never wrong. <laughs> that was a horrendous evil villain laugh. I have years to practice it though, right? Yep, pretty much. Okay, and that's done. And, uh, okay, all right. Okay, so, uh, you know, another thing we can actually talk about, um, speaking of MOSFETs and other fancy things, uh, what do you guys like to use? You know, I mean, when it comes to MOSFETs and stuff. You know, um, like, this little guy right here is using a Perun. So, all right, let's see. Let's put this back in just to finish it off. And... We're going to be cut off in about two minutes. Okay, so let's do that. I think it went in right. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So that goes there. There's there. So it looks like Clone likes running his gate. <coughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Right on. You got one minute. All right, guys, just in case we do cut out, we just wanted to thank you for following us here at RPS Airsoft. Check us out on our Facebook and our YouTube. Our YouTube is not called RPS Airsoft. It's called RPS Tech Talk. Yeah. Unfortunately, RPS Airsoft was taken by a team. Kudos to you guys. Good luck. Um, yeah. Yep. Speaking of good luck, good luck, Legacy. We're working on this for you for, again, Jungle Ball coming up mm -hmm. and one. Giving us a 25 minute or 25 minute, 25 second <laughs> oh, time okay. warning. Wow, huh? 25 minutes? Yeah, a whole nother 25 minutes. Wow. Not this time because we have lots of stuff to do tomorrow. We have lots of guns to work on. Otherwise, we would totally run for another 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. Uh... Here we go. And five, four, 